There is a shocking rise in these types of thefts of high value goods, whether they be watches, jackets, bicycles, which sometimes cost many thousands of pounds these days. And the reasons for it are complex and they are multiple. Some people are stealing these watches and these coats because they want them for themselves. You would think somebody would steal a high value watch and then go and sell it. But some of these road men that we've seen dressed all in black and think they're very cool want to have these watches on their wrists. Same with the jackets, although, of course, they do have a resale value because they cost an awful lot of money. Another factor, there is no deterrent. And what I mean by that is the chances of bumping into a police officer as you run round the corner, having just snatched that item, are very, very rare indeed. In fact, it's just not going to happen. So if you can and you're a criminal and that's the way you think, then why not, sadly? This hurts me to the pit of my stomach to have to say it. But because these thefts are so prevalent, if you've got a nice watch, if you've got a nice coat, then you have to think very seriously about going to these places in London where the thefts are very prevalent. Of course, I want to be able to say, if you've worked hard, if you've been successful, then why shouldn't you walk down the street free of fear and with your very expensive watch on? That's the kind of country I want to live in. Not one that is ridden with crime where people who have been successful are fearful of losing what they've worked so hard for. And it really, really hurts me to say, please think about leaving it at home. Some of these fake watches can look very convincing. And I would imagine Emmanuel's fake was exactly that. But what have we come to when we're having to discuss whether we wear our nice coat or our nice watch or we don't because we are fearful of crime. Kevindu Hetiara Chichi was working as a security guard at this event where a table cost £1,400, so a high-end prestigious event, and Hetiara Chichi, as a security guard, betrayed the trust of those who employed him and betrayed Emmanuel by getting on the phone and warning his criminal cohorts that Emmanuel was wearing what he thought was a very expensive watch. He, he was basically responsible for Emmanuel's death. And of course, when the gang were told about this man with this very expensive watch, they laid him wait. And as Emmanuel left the restaurant, they approached him, grabbed him and stabbed him. Stabbed him once in the heart, a wound from which he died. He died on a night out with friends because he was wearing what criminals thought was an expensive watch. What a tragic waste of life and what a wicked, evil, dreadful thing to do to a young, successful man in the very prime of his young life. The question begs, where are the police? Where are the patrols on the streets creating a deterrent, making the streets a hostile environment for these criminals? On that note, I must, of course, mention that just a few short weeks ago, the Metropolitan Police got a lot of very favourable publicity and rightly so, because around the Soho area, they launched an undercover operation where undercover police officers wore very nice watches, acted as though they were a little bit drunk and therefore a little bit vulnerable as they walked down the back streets. And lo and behold, of course, what happened? They got robbed, but the police were lying in wait and they caught all those robbers. 
I think they captured 21 as a result of that operation, and they were all, quite rightly, convicted. Now, bravo to the Met Police for that. But, of course, it remains an ongoing problem. And when you solve a problem in one police area, unfortunately, they might shift to another one, which is why these police operations need to be joined up. It's why police and boroughs need to speak to each other. So you can try and purge all of the streets of these types of crime. Now, I'm not naive, and I'd like to think I'm not stupid. I wasn't born yesterday, and I understand that we are never, ever going to live in a crime-free nirvana. But the police surrendered the streets to the criminals some years ago, and we see that in the theft of these high-value items, in the burglaries, which are just not solved, in the theft of high-value motor vehicles, in the theft of phones, the theft of bicycles. And don't be a, a, a shopkeeper, because by crikey, shoplifting is off the scale. The police need to re-establish what they do, and that is keeping the streets safe and making it a very hostile area for criminals to operate in. The problems with British policing in 2024 are complex and they are multiple. Let's start at the beginning. The recruitment, the vetting, the training, the training of police officers is lamentable these days. They don't even get to learn the law off by heart. Consequently, we see officers being filmed as they make so many mistakes. Supervision, management is nowhere near what it needs to be. But all the responsibility for this rests with those chief police officers who prowl the corridors of policing power, laying down the rules. The responsibility is theirs. And the trouble with all that lot is that in recent years, They've gone off to Oxford and Cambridge and other posh universities to get their degrees. So they now regard themselves as part of the intelligentsia. And basically, they've come back to policing with their heads full of irrelevant pseudo-intellectual claptrap, which has no place in policing. They have lost contact with what policing was originally conceived for. And so they've turned it into a social service and not a police force. Those same senior officers, although I doubt they ever will, need to decide what policing is going to be, because in its current form, it is failing millions and millions of victims of crime, and we are all a lot less safe. And before I finish on that note, don't believe the nonsense from the politicians and some of the senior police officers about crime is down, the streets are safer. That's not the truth. So much crime these days is simply not reported to the police. And I meet victims of crime almost every day. And when I say to them, did you report it? They say, what's the point? You won't get an investigation. You'll only get a crime reference number. And that's for insurance if you're going to claim. Anybody is a victim of crime. I urge you, please, to report it. Because otherwise, these figures will remain so skewed. I know you might think it's a waste of time, but please, please do it then we can all hope that the police will get a wake-up call and will do what I and many other people want them to do. In the meantime, unfortunately, but realistically, there is now an obligation upon us all to keep ourselves, our homes and our loved ones safe. So, if you haven't got a burger alarm, please get one. If you haven't got CCTV, please install, install a system. They are so 
less expensive than they used to be. Okay, they're not going to guarantee your safety, but many a burglar will go to the next house if they see you've got a good alarm, CCTV, and of course, a very stout front door, very good locks, window locks, don't leave windows open, especially in summer and all those kind of things. If you've got a car sitting on the driveway or in your parking space or on a street, get a steering lock for it as well, because thieves don't use tools these days to steal cars. They use tech. So if they see that you've got a steering lock on your steering wheel that they would have to saw through, thereby creating noise and probably drawing attention to themselves, and of course they have not got saws with them, they'll probably move on to steal a car that doesn't have the steering lock. Make sure your immobilizer works. Make sure you keep your keys in a Faraday pouch. That's one of those kind of metal line pouches. And if you are out and about on the street, please be vigilant. Now, I know I'm going to lose this battle, and I try every day. Do not travel with your head in your phone and your ear iPods, whatever they call them, in your ears, because you have cut off your two most important senses when it comes to not being a victim of crime. Because if you can't see and you can't hear, you won't hear the criminals coming, let alone the fact you might not hear safety announcements on trains and all of that kind of stuff. So please, be aware, be vigilant, look after yourselves, look after each other. <laughs>